Hello and welcome to Mathematics Tutorials and Tricks. In this lesson, I want to take you through area approximation in which we are going to tackle the following objectives. The counting technique, the um, trapezoidal rule and the mid ordinate rule. And as we begin, I need to pick my pen here. Let's begin with the counting technique. In the counting technique, I should say the following. This involves the counting of squares, which are normally one by one centimeter of regular shaped bodies. And as I show that, I'm going to use um, that shape on your screen there. We have the shape of a heart and we want to estimate the area of this. Remember, this is approximation. Therefore, this is what we do. First of all, we divide the, the whole irregu the irregular shape that we are given into squares, which are equal to one by one centimeters like we have there then we count the full squares and we add an average of all the others they could be a small portion like say there's this small portion in this square but there's another square which is got a big part that is covered like this so we're just finding an average of those we normally look for area by getting the area we counting all full squares if there are 20 that is 20 centimeter squares and then we count all squares that are not full and divide by 2. If there are 18, we divide by 2, so that, that represents 9 full squares, since it's just an average of that. In the given question, the full squares are numbered from 1 up to 18. The ones that are not full are numbered from 1 up to 24. Therefore, the total area will be 18 all over 24 all over 2. So 18 plus 24 all over 2, in which case the answer will be 30 centimeters squared. Uh, as we go forward, I want to ask this. If the heart represents the area of a hotel, and such that the scale is at 1 is to 50,000, estimate the area. So how do you estimate that? The first thing is we need to know that 1 centimeter, in this case, represents 50,000 centimeters. And since the squares were 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter, it means it is 50,000 centimeters squared. Now, it means, therefore, 1 centimeter is 0 0.5 of a kilometer, since 100,000 centimeters make a kilometer. And therefore, 1 centimeter squared is uh, this 0 0.5 squared, which means that um, 1 centimeter square will be 0 0.25 of a kilometer square. That means all of these one full square, every of them represents 0 0.25 square kilometer. Therefore, the 30 centimeter squared we got earlier is 30 times 0 0.25, which means that uh, the hotel sits in an area that is uh, 7.5 kilometer squared. Let's move on to the second part, the trapezoidal rule. This one also is called the trapezium method. It means the total region is normally divided into shapes of trapezia of equal width h. Now, the area of trapezium is known at this point, and it is half in brackets a plus b times h, where a and b are parallel sides of the trapezium, and h is the perpendicular distance between a and b. Now, when we are working on this kind of a question, we normally call the A and Bs uh, some Ys, and I'm going to show you in the actual example. Let's assume we are estimating the area under the curve here, bounded by the Y axis, the X axis, and the curve that's on your screen there. First thing is we divide the whole region into some sort of trapezium. You see, this is not a very perfect trapezium, but this is parallel side, this is on a parallel side, this is the perpendicular distance between the two of them. Then there's a, this one here, which is a curve, but it's, a, it's assumed to be a trapezium. Assume for a, mi for a moment if the distance between the two parallel sides was minimized such that we have the first height here, another one just immediately there. Then this distance from this point to that other one would be close to a straight line. That means if we want to improve the accuracy of the trapezium method, we should have as many trapezia as possible. But for the sake of calculation, I've shown only four. Now, we have the trapezia A, B, C, and D. We also have um, their, their heights. The height, the first height here is, is, is Y1, which is 8. Second is Y2, which is 9. Third one, Y9. Y3, which is 8. Y4, which is 5. And the Y5 is, is, is 0. And therefore, as we go forward, I need to mention that the perpendicular distance between the every parallel size of the trapezia is represented by letter h which is the width of every trapezia now if i look for the area of a it will be a half 
in brackets y1 plus y2 multiplied by h since y1 is that parallel to y2 and h is a perpendicular distance between y1 and y2 that means for y2 for uh, for area for b should be half of y2 uh, plus y3 times perpendicular distance between the two of them the same case applies for c and for d and that means the total area should be the sum of the areas a b c and d which is what i have on your screen there we need to progress to factorize out and make it a little more palatable therefore since we have a half a half and h appearing in every part here we can factorize it out and we have half h and everything else within a bracket now within the bracket we have y2 is appearing twice y3 is appearing twice y4 appearing twice and y5 and y1 appearing once but although therefore we can factorize out the 2 and we have y2 y3 y4 and then y5 and y1 just appearing once so they're just written as they are therefore this forms the actual formula the so-called trapezoidal rule of the trapezium method of estimating area under a curve let me say this Whenever we are given a question and we're looking for the area under the curve using the trapezium rule, the formula normally is half h, you open a bracket, a big bracket, then you write the first height, the last height, sorry, you write the first height, then the last height, then plus two in brackets all other heights. That is y2, y3, all the way up to the second last height. For the question we had there, therefore the area will be half in brackets, so half h in brackets y1 plus y5, which is the first height and the last one, plus 2 into all the others, y2, y3, y4. Put the values from what we had earlier, it will be 1 in brackets 1, sorry, half in brackets 1, in big brackets 8 plus 0, then 2 in brackets 9, 8, 5. Why? The 1 is a width, is a width of all the trapezia. 8 is the first height, 0 is the last height here, 9, 8, and 5 is, is the second, third, and second last. And therefore the answer will be, if you simplify that, the answer will be 26 square units. We go to the last part of my lesson today, which is the mid only rule. Let me say that the total area in this case is normally divided into rectangles of equal width, which is normally represented by letter H. The area of a rectangle we know it's length times width but in this case let's say it's length times h which is the width the length is normally represented with delta y is equivalent to the height in the previous concept of trapezoidal rule now if we have this curve here we want to look for the area under the curve this is the curve area under the curve bounded by the y y axis x axis and the line x is equals to four we are going to do this first of all we divide the region into trapezia I'm saying trapezia, not rectangles. We're going to transform these rectangles into trapezia in a short while. Uh, let me also say that um, we have the, 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 the trapezia A, B, C, D. And therefore, what we do now next is uh, we transform them to rectangles. And let me explain using D. If this is a trapezia, and it's just an estimate, it's still not a trapezia because this line here is, is, is not a straight line, it's a curve. But if we have so many um trapezia it will be close to a straight line and the area will be improved to become a lot more accurate but let's assume this is a trapezium and therefore this is a straight line if we cut this triangle at top here overturn it it can fit here such that d transforms from being a trapezium to being um a rectangle the same thing for c you cut this part here overturn it it fits here so that we have a rectangle again and the same thing for b and a and therefore the area for this thing is normally um length times width the width is is h here all through a b c and d have the same width letter h now the heights are 2.1 3.1 5.1 and 8.1 that is the heights of the mid ordinate this line the h by one is 2.1 the, the the y2 which is this line here the height is 3.1 same case for three y three and y four. The two point one, three point one, five point one, eight point one. I've just read from. You read the read. You read the value. The, if you move across this way, what's the y value here? It is two point one. For this one, it will be three point one. If you just read across, the where the mid ordinate touches the curve, moving across the y axis, 
where the mid ordinate for C touches the curve, if you move across along the y-axis, it goes to 5.1. The same case for D, the mid ordinate, where it touches the curve, you just move across. All of those will be the 2.1, 3.1, 5.1, and 8.1. There are those ones there, are the y1, y2, y3, and y8, and y4. And therefore, that leaves us with very little work. area for the first one is H times Y1. H is the width, Y1 is the height of the mid of the ordinate. You see, this is just the length times times width. The same thing, thing for B. B will be, its width is H, therefore, the height being Y2, that is the area there. H times Y2, the same thing for C. H times Y3, the same thing for D, H times Y4. Therefore, total area will be sum of areas A, B, C, D. There we just add them. Uh, we have h times y1, h times y2, times y3, blah, blah, blah. And since h is appearing in every of this, we can factorize that. And so we'll have um, h outside. Then we have y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus y4. And that brings us to the note. We normally say that when we are looking for area under the curve, under the, top, under the mid ordinate rule, area is normally given by h, you open brackets, and then you have the sum of all heights. And that is just that. For the first height all the way up to the last one. Therefore, for the given question, that is a question that we were doing, the area will be h in brackets y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus y4. And that means that area is h, which is 1, uh, in brackets 2.1, 3.1, 5.1. 8.1, all of those added together. And those are the heights of the mid ordinates for A, B, C, and D. And therefore, um, the area will be 18.4 square units. And that brings me to the end of my lesson on area approximation, in which case we have tackled the counting technique, the trapezoidal rule, mid ordinate rule. Anything else that you'll tackle that is related with this will be under integration when we'll be comparing the answers for mid ordinate rule and the trapezoidal rule. And if I get any question on the counting technique, we also compare with what we would have gotten if we were looking for the area using integration. Integration is not approximation. The answer is normally an accurate one. But for these three techniques, it's normally an approximation. No wonder the topic is called area approximation. I hope you find it helpful. Please like, comment, and share. Thank you.